Hi, I'm Paul Ross, that person with two first names. I would like to talk to you today about Tar Sands, that thing which sounds like a movie made with a soundtrack done by Phil Collins. Or if you're from Canada, the most terrifying thing other than Rob Ford being caught off guard. But that's besides the point. Tar sands, or oil sands according to some, are naturally occurring mixtures of sand, clay, or other materials, water and bitumen, which is an extremely heavy and viscous oil that must be treated before it can be used by refineries to produce usable fuels such as gasoline and diesel. And while this definition mentions how the oil found in this conglomerate of crud needs to be treated, it does not go into effect and in how difficult it is treating this oil. So basically, tar sands are like Donald Trump's hair. Something needs to be done about it, but nobody wants to actually dig deep and fix it. The problem now with tar sands is that it gets into the river basins in the province of Alberta, specifically the Athabasca River Basin. And while the basin does not hit Alberta's major cities of Edmonton and Calgary, it cuts diagonally through the province, making it vital for its residents. But remarkably, in May, things changed on the political front. A spring has come to our province in its own very special way. Alberta seeing its politics through a new lens. Premier-designate Rachel Notley now leading a province after a surprise win. <laughs> Achieving what many thought was politically impossible. The PC dynasty falling, Alberta going NDP orange with a complete sweep in Edmonton and a strong showing in Calgary, all helping to push the party into power. The NDP going from 4 to 53 seats and the PCs falling from 70 to just 10. Even more recently, the country of Canada elected a new prime minister last Monday, Justin Trudeau. Well, big news in Canada, where voters elected a new leader for the first time in 10 years on Monday. Justin Trudeau's Liberal Party won a majority of Parliament's 338 seats, bringing to an end Conservative Stephen Harper's near decade in office. The 43-year-old Trudeau is the son of the late Canadian Prime Minister Pierre Trudeau. Harper, one of the longest-serving Western leaders, has stepped down as the head of the Conservative Party. Just by looking at him, you can tell he's a Justin because he's handsome, he's confident, he's just so dreamy. But while Trudeau represents the Liberal Party, his stance on oil is not as progressive as environmentalists would hope it would be. And his policy of being pro-Keystone Pipeline could add on to the damage caused by the Stephen Harper administration. But he might be Canada's only hope for cleaning up this tar sands mess, of course. Him being elected was like Barack Obama being elected in the United States for the presidency. A bunch of conservative people got really angry, and liberals hailed this guy as being hopeful for a change in the future. Meanwhile, the oil industry in Alberta is actually dying up, and fewer people are investing in tar sands. So, after all, what is the effect of tar sands on the Athabasca River base? Well, think of it this way. You know Canada. It's that really cold place with friendly and overly apologetic people who just love hockey. And while all that is true about Canada, Canada is a hotbed, or should I say, cold bed, for dirty oil. So with this new government, and more widespread knowledge of the dangers of tar sands, and pressure from environmental groups, the Athabasca River Basin will hopefully see a change in tar sands.